Welcome to another episode of Twisted News, guys, where we get you up to date on some of the scariest and strangest stories happening all around the world. I'm Andrew. Thanks for tuning in. For this week, we'll talk about a serial killer out of South Asia who preyed on Taurus and has recently been set free. Followed by the dark story of a woman who got even with her husband in the worst way possible. Get rid of his scary mysteries, Twisted News. Number 1. The Serpent Killer Set Free From 1972 to 1982, a notorious serial killer hunted on the streets of several Southeast Asian countries where he preyed primarily on unsuspecting tourists. In total, he has 12 confirmed kills, but it's believed the actual number sits at a staggering 30 people. And recently, he's been set free to roam the streets once again at 78 years old. Charles Sobrage is a French national of Indian-Vietnamese descent who lived in both Asia and France during his troublesome youth. He started off committing several petty crimes and served prison time for running scams and stealing from his victims who were typically coming from the higher rungs of society. In the 70s, he and his wife, Chantel, who came from a prominent and conservative Parisian family, started living as nomads, moving around Eastern Europe and then arriving in Asia to evade arrest for all the crimes they were committing, particularly the ones involving tourists whom they'd meet and then rob along the way. For years, he and his wife were able to evade arrest because they were always on the move. Eventually, the pair split up in early 1973 with Charlie fleeing to Iran leaving behind his family in Kabul, Afghanistan, and Chantal and their daughter returning to France in hopes of turning over a new leaf. Solo now, Charles's crimes escalated when he started dealing drugs and scamming tourists he and his accomplices befriended along the way. One accomplice in particular, who was always by his side, was a J. Chowd Hurry, an Indian native. Charles was accused of killing Frenchman Dominique Rinello by poisoning him. However, authorities say that his first confirmed murder happened in 1975 when the drowned remains of Seattle, Washington native Teresa Knowlton were found in the Gulf of Thailand. After that, another female drowning victim was also identified. Charmaine Carew was a French woman who was discovered wearing a swimsuit that looked suspiciously similar to the style the one Teresa was found in. The similarities and the manner of how they were killed in the clothing later earned Charles the nickname the Bikini Killer. However, it's important to note that upon discovering Charmaine's body, investigators didn't immediately connect her death to Teresa's. But suspicions arose when police learned about Charmaine. See, she had visited Charles because she was looking into what had happened to her then-missing boyfriend, Vitaly Hakim, whose body was later found burnt on a road leading to the Pattaya Resort. But Charles at the time was now on the authorities' radar, but they didn't know where to find him. Then two more victims fell prey to Charles. Dutch students, Hank Bentanja and his fiancée, Cornelia Hemker, who were aged 29 and 25 respectively. They were nursed back to health by Charles and his accomplice, Ajay, after being poisoned, unknowingly to the couple, as part of their scam to win people's loyalty and obedience. This couple was later on found strangled and burned with the report saying they were killed on December 16, 1975. To escape authorities, once again, Charles and another one of his followers then moved to Nepal. And there they committed murders against another American, 29-year-old Connie Bronzick, and a Canadian, 26-year-old Laurent Carrier. After some time, they again returned to Thailand separately, where some of his accomplices started to feel the pressure from authorities. But slowly, they started giving up information as they moved themselves further away from their connection with the killer. Charles then went to India and murdered an Israeli so he could steal his passport. Realizing this worked flawlessly, with his loyal accomplices in tow, they kept on the move, going to Singapore, India, Thailand, and Malaysia to continue stealing and killing. 
Charles and his followers were able to travel from one country to another without being detected by using the various passports of their victims to conceal their identities. In fact, most likely, they were picking their victims based on how they looked and if their physical attributes were comparable with the gangs. He gained notoriety for this and being able to evade capture, which led to him being called the Serpent Killer, slithering from country to country without detection. In May of 76, an international search warrant against Charles was sent out by Interpol regarding four murders he committed in Thailand, and eventually he was caught. He was then in prison for about 21 years in India, but he still lived in luxury behind bars by bribing officials and guards. And because all his crimes were scattered around the world, he could only be tried for certain ones here, and so eventually he was released. He was then able to live in Paris, where he was able to make book and appearance deals, and six years after he was released from prison, Charles returned to Nepal to start a business. But Nepal was not a smart place, as he was still a wanted man there. He was captured, and in 2004, sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Connie Bronzik. A decade after that, he received another 20-year sentence for the murder of Laurent Carrier. However, after serving only 19 years behind bars, the Supreme Court of Nepal ordered the release of Charles due to his age and bad health, especially because of his critical condition in 2018 when he underwent heart surgery. He was sent back to France on the 24th of December, 2022, where he said he'd be suing a lot of people as his cases, particularly about the two murders he was convicted of, were built upon fake documents. His crimes and story have been adapted into a TV crime series entitled The Serpent. If you guys are interested in digging into all the strange details of this case, for which there are many, go check it out. Number 2. Woman's Revenge hey, It's almost Valentine's Day, and while most people, particularly couples, plan their day or weekend ahead of time to spend it with their special someone, there are those who either don't join in on the heavily commercialized occasion or straight up don't believe in it at all. On the afternoon of February 14, 2021, 29-year-old Danielle Booley of Coryville, Pennsylvania called her estranged husband, 27-year-old Mitchell Booley, to set up a rendezvous at a PNC bank in Strasbourg. Over this wasn't a meet-up to try and patch things up or exchange flowers. No, what happened next was nothing any of the witnesses or even Mitchell expected. People in the area claimed that they heard one gunshot, then, after a few moments, numerous rounds ringing out in rapid succession. When they looked to see, they saw a man on the ground bleeding from his wounds. One witness was able to capture video on his cell phone of a fleeing vehicle identified as a gray Dodge Durango after the gunshots. Police immediately responded to the crime scene, where they found Mitchell dead. He'd been shot four times in the torso. Another witness came forward saying that Danielle called him while she was driving away from the crime scene and allegedly bolstered to have successfully put four bullets in her husband but would also put one in herself when she got home. This witness helped the police link the woman to the shooting and was able to provide her home address on Locust Lane in Quarryville. When authorities arrived there at about 5.45 that evening, Danielle refused to let them in and threatened to kill herself if they tried to get her. The standoff then ensued, and it lasted for more than five hours, but in the end, Danielle was taken into custody and, facing charges of one count of criminal homicide and carrying a firearm without a license. During the trial, however, Danielle's legal team argued that what she did was actually in self-defense, though this was quickly refuted by the prosecution. They argued back that what happened was premeditated, especially with how she managed to lure Mitchell to the crime scene. They added that if she was really in danger, she should have gone to the police or shouldn't have initiated a meetup. So recently, on December 21st, after a five-day trial, Danielle was found guilty of first-degree murder and is currently awaiting sentencing. 
No one's relationship is perfect, but it's important that couples work civilly to dispute their differences. It's easier said than done, but obviously murder is never a good option. While we're still unsure of the reason why Danielle felt the strong need to kill her husband, believing that, as she put it, he got what he deserved, it's now a reality for her that she could be spending the rest of her life behind bars, whether it's deserved or not. So there were two of the craziest stories we have for you guys this week. If you enjoyed it, check out some more episodes. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to subscribe and tell your friends and follow us on social media in the links below. Thank you guys. I'll see you soon.